Alright lads, my name is Metagoblin and today I'm doing another unique Star Wars review where I'm going to attempt to defend the honour of the prequel films in the Star Wars saga. Now, I know I'm going to get a ridiculous amount of hate from this video, but I'm at that point in my YouTube career where I'm completely immune to offensive comments, so there wouldn't really be much point. But if you disagree with the video and want to give me some criticism, then I actually encourage it. Just please do it in a mature and logical way. So, overall, I think the hatred towards the prequels has become a little overblown and the internet has allowed it to kind of explode and get out of control like a snowball effect. These films have been criticised for very small problems with the films and people are allowing little bad things to completely colour their opinion about the rest of the film. Because at the end of the day, these films are great films. You know, they tell a great story, they have phenomenal visual and sound design, you know, they aren't that bad. But anyway, let's stop talking generally and get our hands dirty. In this video, I'm going to directly address the problems of each of the films and hopefully highlight the hidden quality of the films. So episode one, obviously the big problem here is the character of Jar Jar Binks. It goes without saying that this character was extremely irritating. Perhaps if his voice was a little less high pitched, then maybe we could have dealt with it a little more. But the thing is guys, Jar Jar Binks has about one minute of dialogue throughout the whole film. So are we going to judge a film purely of one whole minute of a little irritating voice? I think it's a little eccentric, to be honest. I, I personally don't mind Jar Jar that much. I mean, but me and my sister used to watch the films when we were younger. You know, we used to laugh hysterically at all of his lines and continuously like rewind them. So really, he, you know, he's there for the kids. So, you know, he's, be he's there for the comic relief and a, a device to broaden the audience slightly. I mean, it's, it's, at the end of the day, he's such, a, he's such a small part in the film. It's not as if he's a main character, is it? So I think we just need to get, our, get over ourselves a bit. Episode 2 brings up a whole new issue to deal with, and that's a general lack of quality in the acting and really bad writing. When I watch um, Star Wars, though, I'm not really looking for a dramatic masterpiece. I don't expect it from most sci-fi films. You just want the acting to be decent because it's not something you're really paying attention to since the story and visual design um, are more important and appealing. I mean, if you want to watch drama, um, you know, go watch The Shawshank Redemption or American Beauty. So we can't really say these films are crap because they have bad acting. It's like saying, I hate Counter-Strike because there's not enough story. Or I hate the Halo games because there isn't enough racing in it. If, if we're kind of criticising the films as something they shouldn't have. Um, and I'm not saying the films could be good without any acting, like the with absolutely bog standard, horrible acting. But it's not really Star Wars' main priority. We can't exactly say the acting in the originals was outstanding either. And to be honest, guys, you know, seriously, if you want to go see some real acting, then go to the theatre. But once you've been to the theatre, you suddenly realise that the acting in pretty much every film was crap. Now the main acting issue in Attack was um you know is in Attack of the Clones where the scenes you know between Padme and Anakin. I don't think the acting was bad. It was just directed in an uncomfortable and awkward way so it feels painful to watch. And obviously the writing was horrendous. You know the famous sand quote that everyone seems to um, go on about. You know however I think the quality of these scenes could have easily been turned around with a de some decent writing and a better direction. Plus, they, they don't take up much, you know, a massive part of the film. They kind of work more like a subplot, but I reckon it would have been done better if it was, like, obviously massively cut down or maybe more spread out throughout the film. Because it kind of feels like the film randomly switches from Star Wars to Fifty Shades of Grey, you know, out of nowhere. Before we stop talking about this, I'm going to highlight the actual story of this love affair in the film because it's actually developed quite well. I mean, this is bread and butter romance. It actually follows the Romeo and Juliet star-crossed lovers template. It's a classic example of unacquirable and forbidden love where the lovers have external forces and circumstances preventing them from initiating a relationship. For Anakin, it's, um, you know, it's against the Jedi code to be in a romantic relationship with someone, so his career and reputation is at risk. For Padme, it's similar reasons. She has a very demanding profession, and you know her reputation as a senator would be completely ruined if people knew she was in a relationship with a Jedi. But then, at the end, when death is imminent, they declare their love for each other. So really, death serves love and begins love. And I mean, if they died at the end of this, if it was a separate film, it would be a great dramatic tragedy. But anyway, I'll stop talking about it. 
and uh, conclude this video. So, well, conclusively, I think the main problems with these films are quite small elements of the films, and I think people are exaggerating the actual severity of these problems. I don't think we should let small things like this completely ruin the films for us, because they are great films. They tell an, an exciting, adventurous story of political warfare, you have awesome Jedi battles, special effects, space battles, an awesome world setting, I mean, it's everything a science fiction film needs. I watched an Angry, uh, angry Joe video the other day, and he went as far to say that George Lucas killed the, uh, Star Wars with the prequels, and I think it's just way too far. I think when the films first came out, there was, just, there was just this one guy who had to sound like the smartest guy in the room by saying he hated the new Star Wars films, and his opinion has basically spread like the bubonic plague. I mean, you may think I'm a hypocrite for saying that, since I kind of this The Force Awakens in my other video, but I'm not saying I dislike that film, it's a good film. I just wanted to highlight the lack of originality in the actual story. But anyway lads, you know, go easy on me in the comment section. My name is the Metagoblin, and until my next video, ciao! Thank <laughs> you.